So I'm usually a pretty big wuss when it comes to horror movies, but with it being October and Halloween coming up, I thought I would branch out and watch some of them. So today I'm going to watch the 1931 film Frankenstein. Um, I'm very curious to learn how they made it. I love all that behind the scenes trivia. Um, I love practical effects, so I'm expecting to see some of those in this film just because it is older. I know it's based on a book and the character of Frankenstein. I've seen a few images just because it is such a popular character. Um, I haven't read the book, so I'm very curious to see how this relates to the book, if it's completely different. I love learning about film history and watching these older films and just seeing the progression of film and how far we've come and the advancements we've made, so I'm very excited to watch this. So thank you so much for sharing in this first time watching with me. If you have any other suggestions for horror movies you think I should watch, please comment below. And I do sell horror movie themed notebooks on Amazon, the link is below. And if you want to have a say in what movies or TV shows I watch, be sure to join Patreon. And as always, please like, comment, and subscribe to this channel, and check back often for more awesome content. So if any of you feel that you do not care to subject your nerves to such a strain, now is your chance to... Uh, well, we've warned you. I love it. Very theatrical intro, obviously, and just given the time period, he's like, this might shock you if you don't want to stress your nervous system, like now's your chance to leave. And I think that just makes it, your expectations are already set because he's like, you know what, like you've been warned, be cautious of things you're going to see. And that just makes... For me, that makes me want to watch it more um, because it's like, well, what could it be? Like, what mysteries is this going to show me? And especially given the time when this came out. Um, yeah, I love it. You don't see that nowadays. So it's very uh, cool to see that. And uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to watching this. the monster and it just says a question mark they don't list the person who's uh cast as the monster very interesting did you just not want to be known for this role or were they trying to add more mystery honey honey okay they're robbing the grave i'm guessing this is the scientist and he's going to try and bring this guy back to life no. Go on, it can't hurt you. Here's the knife. Yeah, they're just going around collecting bodies. Uh... The picture quality looks really good. I'm guessing this is a restored, newer version. Okay, this guy's a student at this medical college. Yeah, and it's so interesting how they used to do surgeries like this in like a theater where, and I think in the UK it's still called a theater. Maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> Everybody likes sitting around watching. Yeah, and yeah, I know this is for school as well. And that's how they're being taught. He's hoping to steal something from this school. Both of these jars will remain here for your further inspection. Thank you, gentlemen. The class is dismissed. Yeah, that's interesting. He has what he's quoting as a normal brain versus a criminal brain. And they are studying the brain of somebody who led a, uh, a violent life and just the differences in the structure of the brain and trying to figure out why people act a certain way. And yeah, it's interesting. Which brain are they going to steal? Are they going to steal the normal one or are they going to steal the one that's aggressive. Oh, shoot. Of course, of course. It's like, well, this will work. So clumsy of me. Just leaves a brain all over the floor, yeah. I'm so glad you've come. What is it, Liz? Well, you've heard from- Look at this set, like that's just amazing. I shouldn't like that. I'm far too fond of you. <laughs> I wish you were. Oh, my, flirting 1930s style. And don't worry, promise? I won't. 
Okay, yeah, so this is that scientist's fiance. What is it? I'm obsessed with this house. Oh my god. Then recreate it. There you have his mad dream. Yeah, that's interesting. He's trying to destroy life just so we can bring it back. Very well, Fraulein. I warned you. But if you wish it, I will go. I thought Frankenstein was the name of the monster, but it sounds like that's Henry's last name. That's how his professor is referring to him. Interesting. Yeah, and even in the credits, it just said the monster. Ah, yes. Ah, this looks so cool. I'm so excited. I've noticed a lot of like really low shots to show very like high ceilings, tall buildings, like to really give that depth. So cool. Yeah, and his sidekick, and he's got this like very white lab coat, you know, contrast against the very dark scene. Go on, fix the electrodes. Yeah, and it's interesting, like, he's pursuing these things that people think are crazy, and like, how many modern inventions seemed crazy at the time because nobody thought they would work. And this time we're ready. Hey, Fritz, ready. Yeah, and that kind of fine line between, like, ambition and madness. So cool. Such an interesting concept. Let's have one final test. Throw the switches. And the storm going on outside, like, so cool. Just adds to this, like, creepy element. Good. In 15 minutes, the storm should be at its height. Then we'll be ready. Okay, they're planning on using the power of the storm to bring this thing back to life. Okay, interesting. Like a uh, lightning bolt. <laughs> Hate it when your socks fall down. That's the worst. Yeah, comment below. Where did they film this? Like what castle or something did they use for the set? It's so cool. You're crazy! Crazy, am I? No. It's a trigger word. I'm crazy or not. Come on up. Okay, he's gonna show them his experiment. Uh, it's like, of all the nights for me to have visitors, you know, I'm trying to conduct this crazy experiment and I want to be left alone. From the bodies I took from graves, from the gallows, anywhere. So it's just a hodgepodge of different bodies that he stole. Oh god. And then put them all together. It's like, yeah, he's never lived. Like, he's just bits and pieces of several people. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it's very interesting. Like, they're kind of like... Do they want it to work? I know uh, our doctor here does, but uh, the three guys that came to visit, they're like, I think they think he's nuts. Wow, it lifts up. That's so cool. Yes. Oh my God, that would have been terrifying. He's going so high. I don't like heights. Oh, man. They're lifting him up right into the sky. Oh, cheese and rice. Get a better chance of getting struck by lightning if he's that high up. Oh, my God. They're going to zap him. Oh, here we go. His hand's moving. It's alive! It's alive! It's alive! It's alive! It's alive! It's alive! I've definitely heard that quote. I feel like I've used that quote, but I didn't know what it was from, so it's awesome to finally see it in a movie. It's alive! It's alive! Oh my god, it's so creepy. Okay, well, the monster's alive. What about his work? Stuff and nonsense. What about his wedding? There is another woman, and I'm going to find her. Yeah, so they went and told his dad, and he's like, well, he has to be another woman. Like, I don't know what these experiments he's doing are, but clearly he found someone else and isn't interested in marrying you anymore and really doesn't believe what's going on, so. 
The brain that was stolen from my laboratory was a criminal brain. He's like, I didn't know that. Yeah, so the body has come back to life physically, but the brain has yet to kick in, and they're like, oh, it'll just take time. Only evil can come of it. Your health will be ruined if you persist in this madness. Foreshadowing. He's only a few days old, remember? So far, he's been kept in complete darkness. Wait till I bring him into the light. Yeah, it's interesting. Is Frankenstein this like ambitious thinker and dreamer ahead of his time, or is he a madman who's just completely insane? Yeah, it's interesting. I'm really enjoying it so far. It's super creepy. That's one way to make an entrance backwards. That would be so bizarre, like, face to face with this thing that you brought, this Come monster on. you brought back to life. And, yeah, now what is he going to do with him? Like, now what's his plan? Was it just to prove that he could do it, basically? Sit down. Does the monster, like, recognize him? Like, a child would recognize his parent? Is like, this is the person who created you? Like, yeah, so weird. You see, it understands. Yeah, he seems to understand, like, basic commands, like, sit down and come here. And the fact that they didn't make him, like, super scarred or anything. He's got the bolts in his neck, obviously. Then he's got a few scratches on his forehead, but like, that's about it. They didn't make him this like crazy over the top. Maybe it's just because of the time they didn't have that ability yet, or they just decided to make something that looked more human. He's trying to reach for the sun. Oh, bonked him. Oh my god! Get him to the cellar! Shoot it! It's a monster! Yeah, and like, I feel bad for this monster. If they don't even give him a name, they just call him Monster. He didn't ask to be brought back. Like, he didn't ask for this life, and now he's being, you know, treated like an animal, basically, being tied up and can't really express himself yet and doesn't know. Oh my god! Now he's being whipped! And, like, he doesn't seem to understand what's happening, like... Fritz, what are you doing? Stop being a jerk! Get out of there! He killed Fritz? Oh, while well, Fritz was taunting him, oh my god! Yeah, I'm curious to see what, like, the body cam will be like in this movie. If you include all the people who died for the monster to come to life. The performances have been great. Like, this actor playing the monster has been doing, like, a really good job of being, like, disoriented and afraid and, like, trying to figure out the situation. Yeah, I'm really enjoying the performances so far. Victor! Dr. Bradman, come quickly! Yeah, they said earlier that, like this monster is going to destroy you physically and foreshadowing I think what's happening now. Yeah, so they killed him again because he was obviously acting aggressively towards Fritz and they didn't really have a plan for what to do when he came back to life. We'll perform the section at once. As quick as quick as quick as quick. To the S. If you know, you know. Oh god, can you imagine being awake for your an autopsy? No, thank you. Oh my god, he's waking up. Oh! Yeah, it's interesting. It's like, who's the villain? Is the monster the villain? Or is he just, like, reacting to the situation? 
in an aggressive way or is dr frankenstein the monster for creating this thing in the first place and bringing him back to life oh he's on the loose Look at those pups. I really love the cinematography. They're doing these really like wide set shots so you can see the whole scope of everything and then they're punching in. <laughs> My grandmother wouldn't let him drink it. <laughs> Bless her heart. Yeah, so a very good health. <laughs> yeah, so Henry thinks the monster situation is taken care of, that it's dead, and they're uh don't have to worry about it, and he's moving on with his wedding. Son to the house of Frankenstein. <laughs> Here's a jolly good healthy young Frankenstein. Young Frankenstein. I haven't seen that movie. I know uh, Young Frankenstein is a Mel Brooks movie that I haven't seen. Comment below if you think I should watch it. Frankenstein. Hey, that's the name of the movie. There's plenty of beer. It all events. There's lots more where that came from. A whole, like, can you imagine a wedding now that, like, the whole village is invited to or the whole town is invited to? And she's like, yeah, beer's on me, basically. Like, everybody's celebrating, and I don't feel like that happens. Maybe not in, like, Western culture. I don't feel like that happens very often. Maybe it's more, this looks like it's a European, maybe, like, Germany or Austria. Daddy. Goodbye. Be a good girl now. And everybody gets, like, the day off of work. That cat looks angry. And he's just leaving his little girl at home by herself. Oh, please don't drown. Oh, no, no. Please don't drown the kitty. Oh, God. I know, I'm nervous. Such an innocent scene. This, like, little girl with flowers and a kitten by a lake. Oh, God, no. I feel like he might play differently. Would you like one of my flowers? Oh, so kind. I never want to say like an innocent, but like he just like is learning the world for the first time. You those, and I'll have these. So yeah, if someone treats him with kindness, he treats them with kindness. I can make a boat. Oh. <laughs> if someone's cruel to him, he's cruel back to them. Oh. See how mine floats? We all float down here. <laughs> if Pennywise jumps out of that leg, I'm gonna poop my pants. <laughs> yeah, there's something like childlike about him. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! Oh god, this took a turn. I hope that's not deep. Oh god! No, she just threw the little girl in the lake. No, 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 no. Let's hope she can swim. That's a beautiful dress. Why, what's the matter? Yeah, and the cinematography, like, for the time is so cool, and, like, so smooth, and, like, we just walked through, like, three rooms. Why, of course. Did they have, like, dolly systems in the 30s? Comment below and let me know. Henry, don't leave me. Don't leave me. No, darling, you stay here. Henry. He's locking her in. Oh my god, on our wedding day. Cheese and rice. Yeah, he just like blends in perfectly and it's such a contrast between her and her white wedding dress and him all in black and... Yeah, you're trapped. You're locked in there now! It's Elizabeth! Yep. Yeah, and she was foreshadowing, saying, like, I have this bad feeling. Something's going to tear us apart today. Something's going to come between us. Yeah, and he locked the frickin' door. It's all right. I will let it come here. It's all right, darling. It's all right. Oh, no, Maria. She couldn't swim. I thought she could swim. But it looks like, yeah, Frankenstein's bride is okay. And the dad knows what happened, or he's just... Yeah, he's carrying her body through the village. And now the wedding celebrations have turned into an angry mob. Put your torches and go! Yeah, so now they're gonna hunt down this monster.
there's definitely a lot of extras in this film like the main cast is pretty small but it literally feels like the whole town that this was filmed in was involved in the making of this movie so yeah comment below if you know the town or the city that this was filmed in <laughs> The like sky background looks very fake just because there's like you can see lines in it. I mean, maybe it's like a piece of fabric or something, but I'm not gonna hold that against them. It's just just an observation. <laughs> Oh shoot, there he is! Showdown! He's not afraid of fire anymore. Oh my god! He's gonna take him up to this windmill? Yeah, now you can still hear the sounds of like the angry mob outside and they're trying to break in. Yeah, and he's showing like he's now planning on how to. He either wants to protect this. Um, he either wants to protect Frankenstein and bring him inside, or he's planning a more vicious way to kill him. Oh, that's a cool shot. Oh, I like that through like the spinning piece of the windmill. Oh, don't do it. That's gonna end badly. Oh my god. Did he just throw Frankenstein onto the windmill? Oh my god. He just chucked him from that balcony. There's no way he can be alive, right? He landed on that windmill blade. Bring him down to the village and let's take him home. There's, like, come on. I don't know how tall that is, but I feel like the fall alone would kill you. Let alone being chucked onto a windmill. Oh my god, they're gonna burn him alive! Yeah, was he trying to like, toss him down because that's what he thought he wanted? Like he thought he wanted to leave? Or was he trying to hurt him? <laughs> Oh my gosh! Oh no, he's like trapped! That looks very much like they just set a real windmill on fire. Oh, poor monster. For seeing of it, to prevent my grandfather drinking this. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so it looks like Frankenstein is okay. I'm not sure how, but... Here's, here's to our son, to the house of Frankenstein. <laughs> okay, so the audience is led to believe that the monster is dead and burned up in the windmill and looks like Henry Frankenstein's gonna be okay. Boris Karloff, that's his name. I knew it was um, like an iconic name, but they didn't list in the beginning. And it's interesting to make them wait until the end to list his name. Colin Clive, I don't recognize that. Boris Karloff though, I know is a like pretty famous horror movie name probably for this iconic role. So that was my first time watching the 1931 film Frankenstein based off of the book. Um, I really enjoyed it. I was expecting the monster or this creature to be named Frankenstein and then we found out that's not true. He just goes by the title of the monster for the majority of the movie um, and I liked how in the opening credits they didn't list his name. They just put a question mark and I'm not sure why they did that just to add more mystery if the actor had requested that. Um, if they weren't sure how the movie would turn out. He's like I don't know if I want to be associated with this film. As an audience member it definitely added 
more mystery because you're like, who is this? Um, when they had the end credits and I saw the name Boris Karloff, I've definitely heard that name before, but I didn't know what role it was associated with. So um, was this his first on-screen role? Is that why they wanted to add more mystery in case anybody saw his name? They were worried about how he'd be perceived or anything like that. Um, so yeah, I was really glad to finally see. I think that's the first Boris Karloff film I've ever seen. I'm guessing this is his most famous role and this is what he's most known for. I loved that theatrical intro where we have that guy come out and address the audience right away. It definitely made it feel like a play and more like a live event and I can only imagine how cool that would have been to see in the theaters where he's just we don't expect that nowadays and we don't expect the audience to be acknowledged with such like a formal warning. Um, yeah, it was really cool. And especially since they didn't have the rating system then, I'm just curious to see what this would have been rated. There wasn't a ton of gore or swearing or sex scenes or anything like that. I felt like that introduction speech really set up the audience to put them on the edge and just kind of similar to what we saw that overture in uh, Nosferatu, that opening music where you're just stuck in the theater listening to this music thinking, oh, what could be coming next? Next, he just plants all these ideas in your head. He's like, well, you know, if you want to leave now, you had a chance. It kind of reminded me of circuses at the time and when people would go into what they called freak shows and stuff like that. And they would get kind of that warning of being like, be prepared for what you're about to see. Like you haven't seen anything like this and just kind of hyping up the audience. So yeah, I thought that was really interesting. And the fact that he sets it up, the audience can leave. He's like, you know what? If this is, sounds like too much for you, you can leave at any time and just like, it makes the audience have to make a choice right away. It's like, okay, you've already bought a ticket. You've decided to go to this movie. You're going to see this film. And then, oh, two seconds in, someone's saying, well, you could leave. And now your bravery is being kind of tested. I wish I could have been there to see this in the theater when it came out and just people's responses and if they would have left. I haven't read the book, so comment below. Is this similar to the book? Does it take giant leaps and you know change the storyline completely um are there any remakes i know there is a bride of frankenstein sequel that i believe came out around the same time so i'm guessing this film was relatively successful when it came out uh comment below and let me know just because if it has a sequel i'm guessing they warranted putting more money into this franchise I don't know if there's anything past Bride of Frankenstein, um, but yeah, I don't remember seeing any new versions of this. I know this is such an iconic film in the horror genre, and I've definitely seen other movies borrow from the storyline or this concept. Um, I have watched Penny Dreadful, and I believe in season... Maybe it's season two. Um, there's a character who decides to bring this thing back to life and it doesn't say the word Frankenstein, but it's heavily implied that that's what he is doing. And even when they're performing uh, surgery in that theater, um, it reminded me of a show. There's a short lived two season show called The Nick, all about this guy who's trying very unconventional ways to advance medicine. And yeah, it was really interesting. I'm so glad to watch the original and to see the source material. Um, I feel like this was a restored version just because of the quality of the images but the audio still seemed very clear and considering I just watched Nosferatu which came out nine ten years prior the advancements they had made like it wasn't a silent film everybody had dialogue on screen and they were talking and I think more modern audiences would be receptive to watching Frankenstein today because it's not a silent film and because there's audio and because it's more even though it's in black and white it's still something we're used to we don't have to read the cards and it adds that different element having that audio come directly from the actors and having them speak on camera it was so great to finally see that iconic line of it's alive it's alive um, I've definitely heard that line before but like I said I didn't know where it was from so it's so good to finally see it and to just his overwhelming you know feelings for when this creature comes to life and how excited he is that it worked and shouting these you know it's alive it's alive and the feeling the audience must have had when his experiment was successful and just how scary that would be that he's brought this thing back from the dead and he's toying with life and death. I liked the aesthetic of the monster. It wasn't anything super gory, super grotesque, anything like that. And again, that could have just been because of the advancements they had at the time with makeup or special effects or anything like that. But I like that more subtle look. Um, and 
the fact that he looked more human, like he had the bolts in his neck and he had a couple scratches on his face and there was some cuts on his arm for where we're assuming he was pieced together as Frankenstein said that he had collected several different bodies and put them together and there was an episode of Buffy the Vampire Slayer uh, in season two with a similar storyline as well and the fact that he has now come to life and I don't know what uh, Frankenstein's plan was for this monster now that he was alive but yeah the fact that he was just super tall and same with even comparing it to Nosferatu he was just this intimidating creature dressed mostly in black again black and white I couldn't tell what color it was I'm assuming it was black or a dark color there was nothing that you would be able to really tell from like a far distance until he got closer and the monster did, you know, walk a little bit differently. He walked kind of like a zombie, like everything was stiff and it was hard for him to move. And then when you'd get closer, you'd see the monster didn't have any real lines. He just kind of made these like really guttural sounds and like animalistic sounds. And whether he would have advanced to complete sentences, it seemed like he understood the like small commands, like he understood, okay, sit down. But again, like animals understand that as well so it's curious to think of how far he would have advanced if he'd given the chance as we saw the monster die at the end in that windmill when the whole village sets the windmill on fire and he gets trapped under that beam that just makes it even crueler to think that they brought this thing back it's not perfect it's not what they wanted it to be and when it starts behaving in a way that they don't approve of they decide, okay, we have to kill it. We have to destroy it. Would you have given it life if you knew that this is how it would have behaved? Probably not. And yeah, just so interesting. And that line of how far do you go for science and advancing, you know, experiments and trying new things and how far is just complete madman. It was just so interesting to think of from Frankenstein's perspective. He's just... He's this thinker, he's this dreamer, you know, he's got all these big ideas and he wants to execute them and he's like, I know everybody thinks I'm crazy, but, you know, everybody thought people were crazy until it succeeded, basically. So he's like, once this succeeds, I'll have my proof and I'll be able to, you know, back up all these claims. When things go sideways and the monster isn't what he had hoped, it kind of spirals out of control. I definitely felt bad for the monster. They didn't even give him a name. They just called him the monster through the entire movie and Frankenstein spent very very little time trying to educate him and trying to help him through this world that he's now a part of. When we see that first interaction with Frankenstein and the monster, you know, the monster seems nervous. He comes through the door backwards. He's not even sure which way he's supposed to be walking. And Frankenstein is able to get the monster to sit down and he seems to be receptive to that. And I felt the monster really responded to how other people treated him like when we see Fritz tormenting him with the fire Fritz knows he doesn't like the fire and he keeps doing it anyway and then the monster reacts with aggression out of fear and ends up killing Fritz and it's interesting to think if Fritz or Frankenstein had approached the monster like Maria that little girl had with you know kindness and acceptance and you know showing him love and compassion I think the monster would have reciprocated that and would have responded to that instead of being treated like an animal basically he's chained up he's put in the basement they attack him it feels like basically since he was brought back to life all he really knows was fear and even when um, Frankenstein's telling him to sit down he's just yelling sit down at him he's not really treating him like you would treat another person like maybe maybe you yell sit down at other people but chances are if you're first meeting somebody you don't run up to them and yell sit down sit down like I, maybe Frankenstein was also scared of this thing that he had just created it's interesting to think of the monster as being okay is he just something that's stuck in this environment that he doesn't know how to process and when even with that lake scene with Maria he thought by throwing her in she would float they would throw in the flowers and they saw the flowers thrown so his brain is making the connection of okay if I throw this little girl in she's gonna float and we're playing and we're having fun and this is a game I don't feel like he maliciously threw her in trying to hurt her. Um, obviously that was not the case. She did not float and she dies unfortunately, but just the fact that that's what his cognitive abilities are and the fact that Frankenstein had no interest in trying to progress this experiment. Once he had him alive, he was like, great, I've proved it. 
I don't really care what happens now that he's acting aggressively. Just kill it and get rid of it and then we're done. And I don't know if he was planning on trying this experiment again with a different brain or something else. Who knows? As soon as the monster is acting aggressive, Frankenstein is out of there. He's focusing on his wedding. He's not concerned at all and just abandons his creation. And yeah, I think there's a lot of interesting themes in this movie and a lot of layers and a lot of things to dissect. And... I really enjoyed it. I didn't mind that it was in black and white. I love the cinematography when they had these really, really wide, low angle shots and especially the set of Frankenstein's lab. And you can see this huge opening and all the different tools and oh, I wish it was in color just because I feel like it would have been such a rich scene and all the little pieces of this lab would have been so cool to see but again I I really enjoyed it in black and white as well. That scene when they raise the monster up towards the sky to get struck by lightning and the fact that they're using like this natural element of lightning to zap them to life basically so cool and just comment below I'm assuming they just had a pulley system and just raised them up but still really cool and I would have been terrified if I was that actor just because it was the 1930s and it looked like he was pretty high off the ground and if something had gone wrong there would have been no take to so yeah I don't know how many times they did that or what the what was involved in the mechanics of that but I think that would have been terrifying and just you had to put a lot of trust into the design and hope and then being lowered again as well like oh man that would have been so scary for a horror movie it had a relatively low body count I think there was only three or four deaths um, from the monster and it's interesting to think that final scene between the showdown between the creator and the creature basically where you've got Frankenstein facing off with the monster and when the monster throws Frankenstein from the windmill is the monster doing that because he thought that's what he wants uh, Frankenstein wants to get out of here he wants to leave Leave. he wants to you know join this mob basically so is he thinking okay well I'll just check you out and there you go and you'll be good to go and he somehow seemed to survive uh, Frankenstein we saw that shot at the end where he's like in that bed recovering so despite hitting those wood blades of the windmill and landing on the ground he seems to be okay I'm curious to see if that same actor would be in the sequel please no spoilers I will watch Bride of Frankenstein uh, at some point or did the monster do this with intentions of I want want to hurt this person I'm scared I don't know what's going on I'm gonna just throw him out the window of this windmill and then it's not my problem basically so yeah it's interesting to think about what the monster's motives are um, it seems like a lot of his decisions were based out of fear which again I feel like is a very like base emotion so yeah it's it's curious to think about his character as a whole and just what he could have been and how he was brought back. Overall, I really enjoyed it. It was a pretty short movie, um, but I thought it was so well done. I really like the cinematography. I really like this concept of, you know, is it a mad scientist? Is he overly ambitious? And even the concept of the monster, like, is it something you should pity? Is it something you should fear? And just how we respond to these situations. I definitely need to read the book um, so I can compare. And I'm very excited to do some research and learn more about this now that I've seen it all the behind the scenes trivia how they made it um so yeah please comment below any of that stuff I love learning about that I really enjoyed the story thought the acting was well done I'm so glad I finally got to see Boris Karloff in a film I definitely need to watch more of his films um, but thank you so much for sharing in this first time watching with me if you have any other suggestions for horror movies you think I should watch please comment below and as always please like comment and subscribe to this channel and check back often for more awesome content the monster and it just says a question mark which brain are they gonna steal fine line between like ambition and madness planning on using the power of the storm to bring this thing back to life such an innocent sea and this like little girl with flowers and a kitten by a lake he's locking her in oh my god on our wedding day cheese and rice he landed on that windmill blade